over the years, this year now, they're in the class of wickedness. The following year, they're in the class of wickedness. The following year, they're in the class of holiness. The following year, they're still in the class of waywardness. The following year, they're still in the class of, um, of worldliness and worthlessness. But when you make up your mind and you say, I'm coming out of that class, where are you? I said, you're coming out of that class. And then your life will change. You come and you say, Lord, I am willing. Lord, I'm going to be washed. And Lord, I'm going to be made whole at the cross. That's why the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. And he said, come now. He said, don't waste time. You know, uh, Belshazzar, he wasted time. He didn't understand that all those enemies, the Middle Persians, they were just by the wall and they were going to come in and his kingdom had been waged and everything was finished and he was going to perish. Thank God I will not perish. I said, thank God I will not perish. When you listen to the word and you are willing and it says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Tonight, I said tonight, it will wash you and you'll become whiter than snow in Jesus' name. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Look at verse 19 there. In verse 19 there it says, If ye be willing and obedient. Willing and obedient. Belshazzar was not willing. He was not willing to go to the side of his father. And Daniel said, You know the story of your father. But he became humble. He became honest. He became holy. And because of that, the Lord had mercy on him, and the Lord gave him forgiveness and freedom. And forgiveness will come to every willing person today in Jesus' name. You come humble. Have you ever been humble in your life? Did you ever say sorry when you did wrong? Did you ever say sorry to God? Did you ever do like David? I'm a king, but Lord, I have sinned. Against thee, and thee only, have I committed this trespass? Do you come before the Lord in humility? If you do that, the Lord will forgive you today. The Lord will turn your life around today, and you are honest, you are honest. You don't say, they made me do that. The Kadmesa did not say, uh, somebody pushed me to raise up the idol. Somebody pushed me to uh, throw Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace. Somebody pushed me to blaspheme the Lord. They said, I am the guilty one. Nobody pushed me. I did all that myself. It is that honesty the Lord is looking for. And then you say, I won't do that again. After the Lord forgave him, and after the Lord changed his life, he didn't trace up any idol anymore until he died. He didn't throw anybody into the fire, into the furnace, until he died. He didn't practice any wickedness anymore until he died. He continued in that humility before the Lord, in that honesty before the Lord, in that holiness before the Lord, and then the Lord Lord honored him. The honor was permanent because he came to the Lord in all honesty and yielded himself to the Lord and even wrote it down as a testimony and spread it in all the provinces of his kingdom. That's the kind of honesty the Lord is looking for. If you don't have that humility, there's no salvation. If you don't have that honesty, there's no salvation. And if you don't give yourself unto the Lord to cleanse you and to wash you and to purge you and to make you righteous, there is no salvation. Salvation does not come to the people who say, yes, I've sinned, but I'm going to sin more. Yes, I've done evil, I'm going to do evil more. Yes, I raised up idols, I'm going to raise up more idols. No, it doesn't come like that. It's the people that say the barriers of sin and the barriers of idol worship and the barriers of fornication and the barriers of adultery and the barriers of concubine, concubinage, everything will be broken. 
the Lord just as I am. And I want him to wash me. I want him to cleanse me. I want him to turn my life around. The salvation will come and it will come to you today. I said it will come to you today. And then because of Christ, he'll make you worthy. Are you hear your amen? Christ is the only worthy one. He's worthy of the Father. He's worthy of heaven. He's worthy of power. He's worthy in every area. And when he says, I stand at your door and I knock and whosoever hears my voice, I will come in unto him. I will dwell with him. And he comes into your heart. He makes you worthy. I said it makes you so worthy. Salvation will come. Forgiveness will come. And redemption will come. And then he'll make you worthy of heaven at last. And when the rule is called up yonder, thank God if you are saved. Thank God if you have turned around. Thank God if you have bent the knee before the Lord. Thank God if you allow Christ the Savior and Christ the Lord to make you worthy of heaven. When the role is called up yonder, you will be there. I will be there. And when the saints go marching in, the saints, not the sinners, the sinners are not going to crawl in. They are not going to march in. And the unrepentant sinners, they are not going to crawl in. They are not going to ever get in. They feel like a Belshazzar. But when the saints of God, the people who are washed and the people who are saved and the people who have given themselves to the Lord, when they go marching in, thank God I will be there. I said, I will be there. That's why the Lord is calling upon you and he says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Salvation will come to you. Healing will come to you. Deliverance will come to you. The power of God to live a righteous life will come to you. All your past will be forgiven and all your past will be totally changed in Jesus' name. Heads bowed and eyes closed. This is the time to come out of the class of Belshazzar. This is the time for you to humble yourself, to say, Lord, I know I know my life. I know what I've done. I know the way I've been going. I know my situation. But Lord, I come, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord. And my life will change. Everything will turn around. It's bowed and eyes closed. Anywhere you are now, you are hearing the voice. You are hearing the word. And you are hearing the revelation of the Lord. And you don't want to perish like Belshazzar. You want to be saved. You want to be washed. You want to be cleansed. You want your life to be turned around. And you you want to become worthy through Christ. Anywhere you are, you raise up your hand, you're telling the Lord, oh Lord, I'm here, oh Lord, I'm here. Raise up that hand, don't remain like Beshazzar, wayward and wicked and worldly. Don't remain like that, that you are hardened in sin, but to say, Lord, here am I. I've heard your word. I've heard your word. And I realize I'm the one you are talking to. And I want your salvation. I want your forgiveness. I want your freedom. I want you to set me free now. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. And uh, I'm going to pray with you. And the Lord himself it will turn your life around. God bless you there. Stand up. God bless you there. God bless you there. You have a short moment now, like the thief on the cross. He made use of that time. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And forgiveness and freedom and pardon and salvation came to him immediately. As you stand up, you're standing up and you're telling the Lord, Oh Lord, I will not continue in my sin. I will not continue in the evil. I will not continue in my wickedness. I will not continue like Belshazzar. I don't want to perish. I don't want to go to hell like Belshazzar did. Oh Lord, here am I. I want your forgiveness. I want your salvation. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him, tell him, tell him there. And the Lord 
will pardon you. And then the Lord will make you worthy, worthy of heaven and worthy of his grace. As you say, yes, Lord, I come to the Lord. He will save you now. And then he will change your life. He will transform your life. Holiness will come to your life. Righteousness will come to your life. You will no more continue in your smoking, in your drinking, in your adultery, in your fornication. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. He'll make you holy. He'll make you righteous in the private, in the public, anywhere you are. That peace of God and that pardon and that purity will come to your life. And tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and say, Lord, I'm here I want your grace. I'm here. I want your pardon. I'm here. I want your salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You said, whosoever comes to you, you will in no wise cast out. I have come. I am saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And grant me the worthiness and the righteousness that a true child of God ought to have. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these who are standing here and every other place. I pray that your salvation, I pray that your forgiveness, I pray that your pardon, I pray that your eternal life will come to every one of them in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, for the humility, for the honesty, you have, you help them to have a life that shows the light of the gospel in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives in Jesus' name. And I pray at the end, like you took that Nebuchadnezzar to heaven eventually and you honored him, I pray that your honor will be upon these people while they are here on earth. And at last, you take them to heaven in Jesus' name. Confirm your salvation in their hearts, in their lives. And from today, let this new life be reflected in every one of their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Another amen. God bless you. Keep standing. Our counselors are coming to you now. And uh, they'll give you the slip to fill. And you'll be faithful and give them correct information. We're we'll calling our state pastor to take over now. Counselors, let's quickly attend to all our brethren. Let's be very, very fast. Please uh, give them slips to fill. And let's uh, ensure the details are obtained to be able to get in touch with them and be of more spiritual help. All who indicate giving their lives to Christ, we want you to please fill in the slips, collect the slip from our counselors, fill in the details and hand it over back to the counselors as you finish. Please give in the details. We want to be of more spiritual help to you. We want to contact you after this program to be of more spiritual help to you and to be able to uh, share the word of God with you, the love of God, and uh, pray with you and lead you in the way of the Lord, the way of holiness and righteousness, like you have heard, the way that leads to heaven. God will bless you more and more in Jesus' name. If you are connected online, please get the online link and fill in the form online and submit. And by the grace of God, we shall get in touch with you. Those who are connected on radio, you may want to make use of the WhatsApp line, the WhatsApp telephone line, to send in your details. And the number is uh, plus 234-815-819-1017. WhatsApp number, you can send in your details, your name, your phone number, your contacts by email or WhatsApp by sending such details to the WhatsApp number plus 234 815 819 
0.017. I take it again. Plus 234-815-819-1017. This the number, the WhatsApp number that you can use to send in your details. Online, click the uh, link that is there, fill in the form, and submit. For all of us in our various uh, church locations, please collect the slips from the counselors, fill in the details, and hand the form back to the ushers. Let's do that quickly. Very soon, the man of God will be coming apart again with the power of God for divine solution ministration, divine solution prayers. You will receive your miracle today. All of us that are seated or we are, you are standing wherever you may be, please keep praying, keep praying, keep expecting. Very soon, the man of God will be coming up again to pray for every one of us. Don't go yet. Stay where you are. Expect the miracle of God. Expect the blessing of God. Expect divine solution to all the plagues, all the problems, all the challenges that you have ever experienced. Tonight, the Lord will roll them away. Tonight, the Lord will grant you divine solution. Let's keep on praying. Let's keep on praying. If you are connected through Zoom or you are able to see the uh, link that is being displayed, please click the link, fill the online form, and submit. You can submit through WhatsApp, and I give you the WhatsApp number again, plus 234-815-819-1017. You can send in your name, your WhatsApp number, your email, or any other contact through that number that's given. Do that now, and by the grace of God, we shall be in touch with you, will be of more spiritual benefit to you. Counselors, please, let's be very fast. I said, praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. The Lord heals and delivered Nebuchadnezzar. He became humble. He faced the Lord and he knew that his problem was caused by not paying attention to the man of God, Daniel. And eventually, that calamity came upon him. But when he humbled himself and he was honest before the Lord, that humility and that honesty and the holiness, the promise that he made to the Lord. I will not go the bad way, the idolatrous way, and the evil way, the sinful way, and the wicked way anymore, throwing people into fire and, uh, you know, tormenting them. He said, I won't do that again. And then deliverance came unto him. Our God is still the same. As you honestly come to the Lord and humbly come to the Lord, and as you tell the Lord, now you are going to live by His grace according to His will. That healing and that deliverance will come upon your life in Jesus' name. The Lord does not heal somebody to give him strength to go and serve Satan. He wants to be your healer. And when he heals you, he wants that healing. He wants that strength to be used to the glory of God. And as you make up your mind that the healing he gives you and the deliverance he gives you, you are going to use the strength to serve the Lord. Healing, deliverance will come to you today. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed, shall be delivered, 
shall be saved, shall be set free, is coming upon your life right now. Are you ready? God is ready. I said, are you ready? The name of Jesus is available. I said, are you ready? And the healing power of God will flow into your life. Anybody ready there? Raise up that hand and lay, and lay the other hand on yourself. And that power that delivers, that heals, that sets free will come upon your life now. And after the final amen, you'll check up yourself. And whatever the challenge may be, the Lord will have taken everything away. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Because we know with you all things are possible. And when we come before you in all humility, in all honesty, and when we want to use the strength, the deliverance, the healing to the glory of your name, we know that you always heal. And therefore, I pray that your healing, your deliverance, your redemption will come to everyone right now in Jesus' name. I pray from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, you will touch your people. You will transform their lives. Incredible disease, you will take away from them in Jesus' name. Lord, we promise you the healing you give us, the deliverance you give us. We're not going to use any gift of God, any gift of yours for the devil and for evil and for continuing in sin. We're going to use your healing. We're going to use your deliverance to serve you in righteousness and holiness all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. I pray that that insanity and madness will vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray all that swelling, any part of your body, the Lord touch you now and take that infirmity and swelling, take it away from your body in Jesus' name. I pray that the blind eyes there will open and the deaf ears and the dumb tongue will speak out, will hear in Jesus' name that short leg, I command the short leg, grow out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, all those things walking about in the body, causing sensation of fire, causing sensation of pain all over the body, I eradicate and remove that from your body right now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, incurable diseases you will heal. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis be healed in Jesus' name. And all those incurable terminal diseases I command now, the hand of the Lord come upon you, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, those, those who are paralyzed, let them rise up and walk. And those who have any pain in their body, I command that pain will vanish away in Jesus' name. Lord, touch everyone. Heal everyone, deliver everyone, and grant us the grace to make use of the healing, make use of the deliverance in serving the Lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. A final amen. The Lord has touched you. Check up yourself and you see the power of God there. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. The Lord has touched you. Don't go yet. Stay where you are. Check yourself. And we want to hear the testimony. Testimony time is also miracle time. So stay where you are so that we can receive more and more and more from the Lord. If you have checked yourself, you've seen the miracle. We want you to come over to the front here, to the left-hand side. Our leaders are waiting to receive you, to interview you, and to give you the chance of testifying, testifying to the glory of God. You must tell the whole world the miracle, the great demonstration of the power of God in your life. You must tell everyone what God has done. Stay where you are. Don't go yet. It's miracle time. It's blessing time. It's celebration time. It's testimony time. As you see the miracle power of God operating in your life, and as uh, you are liberated, you receive your miracle, shout hallelujah, come out here, 
We want to hear your testimony. We want to hear your testimony. Let the leaders get ready. Let the leaders get ready. And then we want to testify. We want to listen to the testimony of what God has done for you. Number one, get ready. Number two, number three, line them up. Yes, quickly, quickly, quickly. We are waiting for you. Come out here. Come out here in testimony time. Come out here to the front towards the left-hand side. The Lord is at work. The miracle power of God is at work. The Lord is working. The Lord has touched you. Check yourself. What you couldn't do before, begin to do it now. Speak to those who are deaf and dumb. They will hear you. They will speak. They will hear. They will speak. Miracle. Miracle. The God of miracles is at work. The God of miracles is giving us divine solution. Come out. Come out. We want to listen to your testimony. Let's get them ready. As touched you. The Lord has healed you. The Lord has delivered you. First testifier quickly. Why we worry Delta States, Nigeria, West Africa. Worry Delta States, South South Nigeria, West Africa. Delta Lie. 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 Why region? Delta South. I'm born again by the grace of God. I want to share the goodness of God in my life. I was having an air over two years. Oh, sorry, over ten years. But during the time of the uh, program of Divine Church, and God touched me, and the air vanished away. Praise the Lord. I was having, uh, I have an accident over two years with this my right hand, which I cannot lift up. I cannot take something. I cannot, cannot take it back. But now, God has done it for me. Praise the Lord. Let's have we'll the first. take some other testimonies now. And, and then we... Of our hand, then I want to see that if we have any testimony, we should let us know. And then, probably, if we need Pastor Dada phone number, which is our regional officer, I will give it to you so that you can talk to him, please, to share your experience about the global crusade. Then, so that you can interact with any one of us. God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. I want us to sit down so that we can concentrate. Uh, yesterday, it was marvelous before God in the Pala Bible Church and then for what God has been drawing, doing through the global crusade. And as a result of that, I decided that we too should show our appreciation to God, to General Ofasia, I mean to General Superintendent, to Aru, our regional officer. Although he took another dimension in the sense that many people have been telling me they want to talk to Aru, particularly about his servant, and then, but I've been trying to block them. So they use that opportunity to say some things about uh, the humble person that is talking before you. So, but uh, we will listen to it, and then as Brad James is not around, and then Diane too is not around, in case you want to do like what they did, just to show appreciation to God, to our general superintendent, and to the regional officer, you will see, and then we can able to participate too. So you can let us see. Would you like that to show what 
Dwai. I want to pray for him more love for our father in the Lord, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, for his impact through the word of the Lord in my life. I thank God and I pray that Almighty God will continue to increase him and the grace of the Lord will continue to be upon him. And his labor of love in our life will not be in vain in Jesus' name. I congratulate the Lord for the global crusade. Almighty God will increase heaven by the power and the blood of the Holy Spirit. by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. And we will continue to increase. Thank you, O Lord, for everything you have done. Praise the Lord. I'm Maria Garcia, and I really and truly enjoy coming to church to serve his word and also tell others about Pastor Matthew and his family and how awesome it is here. I also want to say once it is written in Acts, Acts 10, 34, that our testimony is important. That's showing that we are learning and discovering his word and to share it with others. I want to thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for letting us come to this wonderful, deeper life Christian church. And it's wonderful. And I thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints, who are hearing this word from Deeper Life Christian Church. I'm a new member here. I have been praying for a long, long time to find a church that will fit my needs and i was invited to this church one day and it's where i need to be my father is from africa but i never knew my heritage because i was born in america and i never got to go back home to see where i was really from so i'm serving under a wonderful pastor pastor matthew and he is teaching me and training me and when i have problems i go to him and he will look at me straight in my face and tell me, no, don't do that. Pray. No, this is what you need to do. He'll send me messages. And this is what I need. God is instructing me in my life. And I thank God for this. I will not leave this church unless God instructs me to go elsewhere. I ask you to pray for my strength in the Lord. And I ask you to pray for this church that it grows abundantly and it will send more members here. And my verse that I will go to when I have problems is Jeremiah 33, 3. Call, on, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knoweth not. And again, all you saints out there, pray for all of us in this church, and also pray for Pastor Matthew's family and his works in this church because he has such great needs here and if you just support us by praying for us we thank you so much god bless to everybody who is hearing this and thank you my name is zabula muhammad anwar and thank you our god to come to church every day we are coming deeper my name is Lisa Ruffner. I go to Deeper Life Bible Church, and I go to another church when I die. So anyways, I'm glad I got up this morning and went to go to church. I was sick this morning. My legs were hurting. And yesterday, I wasn't feeling too good, but I still was on the road. So anyways, I'm glad every Sunday I go to um, Bible study tonight on Mondays. And Tuesdays, I'll be at home, so I'll be happy. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Need for Life Bible Church. It taught me a lot through my years knowing I'm smart. Six year in um, Need for Life Bible Church. Uh, I read my Bible every night, and um, thank you. Many people believe that I'm just quiet, 
gentle. He says that you love. He says that you love. I told you. Remember there was a day that was that we kept seven hours in the house. But I said, I don't think I've ever spent three hours, two hours in the house. No more than seven hours in the house. Just we need to have peace. And I can't forget that day. Dr. Fauci is under attack, and I need you to sign my. Of oh, are still ready to contribute something like that. Fine. If you want it to be like that, fine. I pray that the grace of the Lord will be upon us, and God will continue to elevate his church in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, the Bible told me, keep reminding me of something recently. The foolishness of God is better than wisdom of man. So by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not, you will not miss me. I will not miss you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. God will take every one of us there in Jesus' name. Once again, I want to appreciate every one of you. And I pray that the word of salvation will be taken it serious and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, it will take us to heaven. Thank you. Uh, let's bring our title. Okay? Let's bring our... Let's bring our title of... In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of today. We thank you, Lord, because of what you are doing in our life and what you will still continue to do. We thank you, Lord, because of the testimony you let it abound in the Palais Bible Church of Charlotte. We glorify your name because of what you are doing. We thank you, Lord, because of what you will still continue to do. Father, here we are. We pray by the power and the in the blood of Jesus Christ, the more anointing, Lord, beyond human understanding, we continue to send it upon our general superintendent, our regional overseer, and your, your humble servant here in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, heaven is our goal. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not miss it in Jesus' name. Out of what you are giving to us, we bring this token. Father, let it be acceptable before you in Jesus' name. And let the church use you sit for the glorification of your name. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you are the Lord and answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let be in the mood of prayer. Let's close our eyes. Know that you don't need to watch anybody that bring one offering or the other. But I want you to know it is your responsibility to pay your ten percent to the house of the Lord. Nobody need to beg you. Nobody need to tell you. It's a God commandment that we need to obey. And as we are obeying it, God will continue to bless us and His mercy will continue to be upon us in Jesus' name. We will not use the money in the hospital or in the uh, court of law in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Once again, thank you. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.
In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 We're going to be praying from the book of First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Mm-hmm. In our text we can we can see that we learn we're learning about um charity, which is the most important trait and attribute that a believer must have. We see the conditions that come with charity. You know, it is not enough for us to say that we love our brothers, we love our sisters, but when our, when those people are prosperous, when they buy a new house, new car, have a prosperous um, business, we are envious of them. The Bible says that we don't have charity. It is not enough for us to say that we are prophets and we are ministers of Christ, but yet we are easily provoked. We get mad and we get upset so easily that someone will be doubting whether we are saved or not. We are puffed up, boisterous. We have this all about me kind of attitude. The Bible is saying that if we have those things, we don't have charity. You know, we cannot say that we have charity when we are easily disappointed, when someone disappoints us, you know, so we, we just give up easily on them. We only love the people that love us back. You know, if we imagine that if that's the way we, God, God treated us, only love us when we love him, if many of us do not have come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So we just want to go to the Lord in prayer. We just want to first of all ask um, God to forgive us. If there's any way that we have not shown love, whether to our spouse, whether to our friends, our brethren, our co-workers, that God should forgive us. That God should impact in us the true spirit of charity, the spirit of love that is not easily provoked, that is not puffed up. That, that doesn't just love just because they are getting love back in return. Let us pray that God will forgive us if there's any way we have not been exhibiting that love 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let us pray.
us getting anything back in return. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let our Lord come before you. Lord, we need love. Lord, we need love. We need love. Lord, 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 we need love. And <laughs> I love you. 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 I love you.